So an AI-powered robot lawyer was actually supposed to go into court and help a defendant fight a parking ticket. So this tweet from Joshua Browder said that history will be made for the first time ever a robot will represent somebody in a US courtroom. But unfortunately, the plan was canceled because the chatbot's creator was threatened with jail time from the state bar prosecutors. Bad news, after receiving threats from the state bar prosecutors, it seems likely that they will put me in jail for six months if I follow through with bringing a robot lawyer into a physical courtroom. Now this artificial intelligent lawyer was meant to run on a smartphone, so it was designed to listen to the courtroom arguments, and then the defendant was gonna put on some headphones and it was gonna guide him through what to say. Could some kind of digital lawyer like this help in some cases in the future? Maybe it could be very possible. Lawyers certainly can be expensive, and for some people, this might be a great option. But for now, this kind of technology isn't legal in any courtroom, and in most places, you'll actually need consent to record too, so a couple hurdles there to still overcome. Why governments are struggling with artificial intelligence, the untold story. So Scott Jensen just wrote this very interesting piece about how government might wanna restructure around some of the new artificial intelligence tools that we have. Now his thoughts are the government shouldn't buy off-the-shelf tech unless it's a last resort. Instead, it should be solved in-house. Getting government employees to work on real problems, not to budget what to buy. To get the government to innovate, they should get the people that they serve involved and they should think of it as a product market fit. And then to have somewhat of a development process where you can keep refining and iterating on those solutions. Just like a product-focused, goal-oriented tech company would. And because the government has some of the most unique data sets in the country, we should start applying machine learning and artificial intelligence to that data. For example, some states have empowered systems like this to help unemployed people find new jobs by analyzing their resumes. And he was actually part of a government team that during the pandemic helped unemployment claims move much faster through government bureaucracy thanks to tech that works like this and processes that think like his. So governments have a lot of data and that can be super helpful during a pandemic or if you're trying to like predict crime or something. But it also raises some serious concerns about privacy and free decision making. Like here's the thing, as AI gets better, it's going to feel like we're being watched all the time. Like how Cambridge Analytica used all that Facebook data to influence the 2016 election but times chat GPT, yikes. And right now there's more questions than there are answers when it comes to government's ethics and data. How should they collect and analyze the data? How should they explain the results to people? And how can we make sure that the government's not invading our privacy, but it's still getting the kind of data that it needs to hopefully the government can become smarter, faster, more agile, and help the citizens more? Because a lot of that government red tape could definitely be automated and AI might be a great tool for them. Innocent man arrested over shocking facial recognition fail. Randall Reed was pulled over by the police and told that he had two warrants for his arrest. Now, unfortunately, this was news to Randall, but when the police ran his identification, that's what the computer system said, that he had two warrants out for his arrest, so it was their obligation to arrest him. And after a week away from his work, sitting in jail and paying thousands of dollars in lawyer fees, it turned out that Randall's wrongful arrest actually came from a chain of technologies, including a facial recognition mismatch. Randall's lawyer actually went to where the misassigned crime occurred, and he confirmed that the suspect did look a lot like Randall, but if you look close, you can tell that there is differences and it was not him. So even though I think that ID match technology certainly can and should help police that are overworked, it also highlights where these errors can go wrong and where humans need to be involved in the process to at least double check what these matches actually show. But it highlights the need for humans to stay in the loop during this process. Let's talk about Romania's groundbreaking AI advisor, Ion. The Romanian Prime Minister added a very unique new advisor to the cabinet, an AI-powered honorary advisor named Ion. So Ion's purpose is to quickly and automatically capture the needs and wants of the citizens of Romania. And Ion is the first artificial intelligent advisor in government anywhere. And Ion will synthesize all of this information into a digestible summary. And it can even go a step further and turn that summary into a list of potential actions that the government could take. It just won't respond directly to users yet. But it's a great way to drink from a fire hose of information that's coming in, and maybe this can help the government be more efficient. Did you know that the former president, Herbert Hoover, already has found a timeless solution to our new artificial intelligence dilemma? So The Guardian just wrote a piece that had an interesting thought process behind solving the problem of artificial 
artificial intelligence and government regulation. And their inspiration came from something that former President Herbert Hoover did. Now his technological hurdle was electricity. Now at this point in his career, he was the US Secretary of Commerce. And to ensure that electricity was rolled out with safety, reliability, and compatibility, Hoover convened these big panels of experts. In the agenda, they would identify potential problems, some dangers, they would get together and propose new ideas, they would talk about how to unify the standards, and they would always discuss this process with the public. This approach didn't rely solely on government or business, it was a collaboration of both with the citizens. Because if you want to align something to the common good, you sort of need somebody that represents all the different industries in one place. And maybe a similar solution would make sense right now to help guide the development of AI. The hidden truth about artificial intelligence in government. Three insights you can't ignore. Peter Lowen shared some thoughts about how democratic values and artificial intelligence might be able to come together. Now he recommends to unlock AI's benefits for the public sector, three insights should be considered. Insight the first, the distributional fact. Because AI is likely to touch so many industries, concerns about job loss should be reassessed. Now insight the second, he calls the value premium. So AI is a great technology, but so far it's still struggling with some human level interpretations. So public servants, what they need to do is be that human element, the trust, the transparency, the one-on-one -on -one contact. And insight the third is called the democratic advantage. Now he argues that democracies like the United States have a built-in advantage when it comes to incorporating artificial intelligence into the fabric of the society. Because democracies allow for self-criticism and correction. So democracy should be the best place to implement something for social good. AI to revolutionize India's legal system because the Indian judicial system is struggling big time. With a massive 47 million cases pending and a four year waiting list to enforce a contract. Like reduced trust in economic transactions and also just thinking the government just you know can't get it done. But here's where AI might be able to step in and save the day. Because the legal world is actually pretty good for AI. It's so well documented and it's natural language, something that AI has been excelling at recently. So AI could take those 47 million cases categorize and analyze them. It could help identify the major disputes and it could also give some feedback as to how to handle all of that information. And China's already experimenting with a similar system that India could piggyback off of. And as long as India could implement it, even if it moved the needle in a small way for now, it could have a big impact in the long run. AI giants under fire. The FTC and the DOJ are targeting anti-competitive tactics. So the US Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, and the Department of Justice Antitrust Department plan to examine AI tools for anti-competitive behavior. So their concern is that because these large language models are so expensive and hard to train, they require so much expertise that the big tech companies can use that leverage to basically squash all the competitors. Justice Department antitrust head Jonathan Cantor warned that major companies might use anti-competitive tactics to protect their dominance. He talked about how the big AI models require scale and that can price out a lot of the competition. And also the massive data sets that these companies have are just out of reach of other people. So they might never have the chance to build these models. Although there are a lot of reasons to think that you can actually generate the data you need to train models in the future, but for another video. But these models were incredibly expensive to produce and those investors are going to want to see a return on that investment. So he's right, maybe pressure will increase for anti-competitive tactics over time.